load of zucchini. We have a bag of peppers and cucumbers that all need to get preserved tonight. So we are going to get that done. We are going to make bread and butter pickles, um, just a simple pickled pepper. And um, then we're going to make a zucchini bread jam and probably the rest of this will just shred up and get it ready to go into the freeze dryer. So I think we need to start with the cucumbers because they need to get sliced and put with ice and some salt to sit for a couple of hours before we can actually can them up. So let's get started with these. So I have been picking these out of my garden for the last mm, a week or so. Oh, actually I need to run out and get a few more. Mom brought over some from her garden as well. Um, and they're just in the fridge out in the garage. So I wanna grab those as well. And we today are going to use, two of our recipes are going to be tested recipes. So they are tested to be safe for canning. Um, the bread and butter pickles are not. They are very similar to a tested recipe, but it is actually my um, grandmother's recipe from my dad's side. And I love it. It's They are amazing pickles and it's basically vinegar. So it would be really hard for this to go badly. <laughs> so we're going to use that and I've used it for many, many years. And like I said, the first thing we need to do is get our cucumbers. Well, they need to be washed first, washed, sliced, and in a bowl with some ice. I just had a towel in with them to uh, keep the moisture level down a little bit more. And, uh, but, because like I said, some of these have been in here a little too long. And I didn't want them to go bad. Only lost two. David actually just sharpened our knives, so they should go through this pretty quickly. You could definitely use um, a food processor, but I like my pickles to be a little bit thicker than they tend to get in a food processor. So, and there's not that many of them. And it just won't take, shouldn't take too long. Bowl is partially full and we are going to use a half a cup of salt. So I'm actually going to spread some of the salt on there now so it's not quite as difficult to mix. And this is just kosher salt. Last two little guys with these little ones, instead of doing rounds, I'm kind of cutting them into spears um, just because the rounds are so teeny tiny. Last of the salt and just grab some ice. Try to mix this up a little bit here. 
probably should have added ice in as I was doing it as well. It's okay. Does not have to be perfectly mixed. All right, we are going to set this to the side for, it says four hours. Um, I might end up doing overnight because it is already almost eight o'clock and we have several other projects to get to tonight. So yeah, these probably will get canned, finished up tomorrow. It was at this point that I lost my microphone feed. I will explain the reason for that here in a little bit, but for the rest of this evening, I don't have any sound. So we're gonna be doing a little voiceover. At this point, I'm getting ready to do the pickled banana peppers. I'm weighing them because I knew I didn't have enough for a full recipe. So I just wanted to figure out what my ratios were going to be for my brine, how much brine I would need to make. It was ended up being about a half recipe. Then I just chopped them all up into little rounds and um, started to make the brine. Here I'm explaining that the recipe actually calls for um, apple cider vinegar, but I was lazy and did not want to go get it. So I'm using white. And I'm explaining that you can substitute vinegars in canning recipes, tested recipes, as long as the vinegar you're using um, still has 5% acidity, which is always printed on the bottle. And this is a super simple recipe. The brine is just water, vinegar, and salt. And then I am adding mustard seed and celery seed into each of the jars here and then just packing it into the jars. You do want to, this is a raw pack, so you're not, I'm not gonna cook these before packing them, obviously. So you wanna get them in there pretty tightly um, as you are packing the jar. And then just pouring the brine over until I think I needed about a half inch headspace. As you can see, it is the next day, next night. Um, I realized, well, a couple of things happened last night. First of all, I realized that when I had gone out to feed the horses and my microphone disconnected from the receiver, when I came back, it didn't reconnect. And so there was no sound. So you will have had a voiceover for part of that last little bit. Um, and then uh, the thing about canning is you have to do things properly. And uh, one of the projects, other things that I was doing last night, which I didn't really show you guys, but was canning up some chicken broth that David had made, which of course needs to be pressure canned. So I had canned the peppers, which by the way, they came out absolutely beautifully. Um, and that was water bath canning, which means you have to have water that covers your jars by at least an inch. So when I took the peppers out and put the chicken broth in, I did not empty that water. For pressure canning, you're only supposed to have about two or three inches in the bottom of the pan of water. Yeah, my jars were completely covered with water. And then I pressure canned them and I did not open it up until this morning and realized my mistake. And at that point, you really can't recan it and have it truly be safe. So I had to dump it all out. <laughs> that is actually the first time I've ever had to dump out a canning project because I canned it incorrectly. But it is a good lesson. Maybe you shouldn't be doing canning at 9.30 at night. <laughs> so I'm going to at least try and get the pickles done tonight. I'm not going to try and get the zucchini jam done tonight. Um, so I might still bring you back for the that tomorrow night when I can get to that, but let's get the pickles done for now. Like I mentioned yesterday, this is not a tested recipe. This is a family recipe. So um, there are lots of tested bread and butter re recipes. If you want to go that route, definitely um, look them up. They are in the ball books and on the National National Center for Home Food Preservation website has those recipes as well. Um, but we are going to do this one. So we are going to start with three and a half cups of granulated sugar. Okay. 
And our spices are just going to be mustard seed, celery seed, whole cloves, and turmeric. Oh, actually, it doesn't call for whole cloves, but I like to have whole cloves in the jars. So actually, that's what I'll do. I'll just put a couple of whole cloves into each jar, but this actually calls for ground, which I do have. This is probably the reason that I like bread and butter pickles so much. I absolutely love the flavor of cloves. I know it can be really strong for some people, and it can get really strong if you're not careful with it, but I just absolutely love the flavor of it. And then just a half teaspoon of turmeric, and this is mostly just for coloring not going to impart all that much flavor. And then we just need uh, four cups of vinegar. We're going to get this on to heat and get the sugar melted. We don't want it to come all the way up to a boil, but we do want to make sure that the, like I said, the sugar is completely melted and get the spice infused into it. And then we need to drain our cucumbers. And then once this has come up to temperature, we will put the cucumbers in here and bring it back up. It says until scalding. That's such a old fashioned term. I love it. <laughs> um, it says heat over low until scalding, don't bring to a boil. And usually scalding, from what I remember, is when you can see the little bubbles forming along the edges of the pot, but it's not actually boiling yet. I wonder if scalding actually has like a, an official temperature. I'll have to look it up. All right, while this is doing its thing, I'm going to drain our cucumbers. And this is a drain, but not rinse. All right, we will just let these set here and drain until our brine is ready to go. Our sugar has all melted in or dissolved in here so we are going to try not to burn ourselves as we pour the pickles in like that <laughs> so my family recipe does not have actual canning recipes other than to say seal it or make it sure it's sealed um and actually my mom told me that she has never canned her bread and butter pickles so we are not going to do that. We are going to can them. So I looked up the recipe in the ball book. Um, it is in this ball book here. And the recipe is almost exactly the same as our family recipe, except that it doesn't have the uh, cloves, which I think is what makes this recipe really unique and really good. <laughs> um, and so I am now even more pleased to see this because this makes our recipe pretty much safe because the one thing that you can mess around with in canning in terms of proportions and such are dry herbs and spices. So we are just going to let this come up to temperature now and then we will get it in the jars and I need to go turn on the canner so it is heating up. And the jars have been warming up in the canner as the water warms up, so they should be warm enough to put our pickles into. You do not want to put hot whatever you're canning into cold jars or you run the risk of them breaking, which I have had happen. It is not very much fun to open up your canner and see pickles floating all around. <laughs> 
I am going to try not to get as much liquid right now so I can mostly pack them with the cucumbers and onions and then I will add the liquid after. Oh, this is just not working at all, my goodness. So I think, like I was saying, I don't think I finished saying about the bread and butter pickles recipe in the ball book. Like I said, the recipe is very, very similar, um, except for cloves. So that's the only difference. And in fact, even the uh, way that you prepare it by putting the cucumbers in the brine after it's heated up and then reheating it is exactly the same. So preparation and everything is similar. And the reason I actually looked it up was because I wanted to know how long I should can them for. And it's 10 minutes if you are at below a thousand feet. And for us, it will be 20. You actually might even be able to see. This is one of my last jars of the bread and butter pickles that I did in 2022 when my friend and I did a huge batch of pickling and tomato jam, and we did dill pickles, pickled peppers. It was a lot of fun, and we made a humongous amount of them, which is why I still have jars of them. Since these are sweet and have a lot of sugar in them, I'm going to make sure we Wipe off our rims here. New bell. New lids. Oh, they smell so good. All right, we are going to plop these in the canner and get them going. I do want to add a splash of vinegar to this. Our, we are out of the salt for our water softener, so my jars last night came out cloudy. And vinegar helps stop that. Oh my goodness. I forgot again that I wanted to put pickle crisp in these. Ugh, do I take them out and redo them? Yes. I had wanted to put the pickle crisp in with the peppers as well. I completely forgot with them. But I used it last time we made these pickles. And like I said, this was in 2022 and they are still nice and crunchy. So I do want to use it. It also said that I was going to put a couple of cloves in each of these. So let me do that too. All you need is an eighth of a teaspoon for pints. Honestly, this is mostly just for aesthetics. Makes the jars look a little pretty to have the cloves floating around in them. All right, shall we try that again? Now, we are going to let this come up to temperature and when or come up to a boil, actually it's come to full boil. And once it does, we will set a timer for 20 minutes. So as I said, canning at 9.05 at night is probably the latest I should be canning. And since I have never made the zucchini bread jam before, we are not going to get to that tonight. So we will be back tomorrow and you can see how the pickles turned out. The next thing we need to take care of it's a lot of zucchini and this isn't even, I don't know, there's probably four times this still in the fridge out in the garage. So uh, as planned, we are going to do the zucchini jam. I'm just gonna do a single batch of that because I have no idea what it tastes like or if I will like it. Um, and then I will just shred the rest of it up and um, I can't decide if I'm just gonna dehydrate it because I honestly don't think it makes that big of a difference if I dehydrate it versus freeze dry it. 
because the only thing I use this for really is to put into recipes. So I, because I don't, we won't eat it, even if it's rehydrated decently from freeze dried. I, we, we wouldn't eat it that way. So, um, and I just have more room in my dehydrator than I do my freeze dryer. So I will figure that out. But first of all, we need to get it all shredded up. So let's get that going right now. We're going to use our handy dandy little attachment for this guy. I think that's right. Oh, actually, let me show you also how the pickles came out. They are lovely. So I'm gonna get these out of the way though. All cut up and some of the bigger pieces, I did um, take the seeds out from the middle. They're not super seedy, actually, surprisingly, but there definitely are some. Um, where's my little stock? All right, so here we go. That made very quick work of things. This is for the girls. They certainly get lots of treats this time of year. So let us get started on our jam. And then whatever we have left over of this will just go into the dehydrator, like I said. So we only need four cups of zucchini. So let's start there. We need a cup of apple juice. Some golden raisins, just a quarter cup. One tablespoon of bottled lemon juice. Do not use fresh when you are canning because the acidity can be very different from lemon to lemon, but bottled lemon juice has uniform acidity. And then the last but not least, our cinnamon and nutmeg. Super simple. The only thing we have left is uh, sugar and our pectin. Uh, so we're just going to combine them all, bring to a full rolling boil that cannot be stirred down over high heat. Then add the sugar, return to a boil, boil for a minute. Wait, where, in, where does the pectin go in? Oh, the pectin needs to go in now. All ingredients except sugar. All right. There's currently not very much liquid in here, but I think that uh, the zucchini will let a lot of liquid out fairly quickly as it heats up. It smells good. We have our molten hot jam here. We'll just get our jars out of the canner where they have been heating. And we can get them filled up. This is only, only supposed to make four half pints, but I, this looks like it will make more than that. Well, we'll see. It smells absolutely amazing. So if it, the texture isn't weird, because that's kind of my concern with this, is that I won't like the texture. But if it's not weird, I will probably definitely make, probably definitely, I will make another batch of this. All right, you do have to work somewhat quickly when you are working with jams like this, with lots of pectin.
I'm actually only going to leave a quarter inch of headspace for this. All right, well, let's get these in the canner. Don't worry, the leftover of this is gonna go in this jar and into the fridge, but let's get these into the canner and get started. Like always, we will bring this up to a boil and then um, we will process it for 25 minutes, only 15 if you are at a lower elevation than us, but let me, not only are we going to put the leftovers of this in a jar, but we are going to taste this as well. See what we think. Oh, that's really good. And actually the little, zucchini shreds they're like yeah the, the texture isn't weird they're a little bit um they still have some bite to them but they don't so they're not like smushy or anything i don't know it's really hard to describe but it's really good mm. oh my gosh i am so definitely making more of this holy cow mm. thankfully i have a whole lot of zucchini to use <laughs> All right, we're going to get the rest of this in the jar, get that canned up, and I will bring you back when they are coming out of the canner. off so it could cool without shocking the jars and here we go. Isn't that pretty? So there we have it. We got pickles and peppers and our beautiful little jams, which are still very hot. <laughs> and like I said, I am definitely going to make more of that jam. I It's super unique. I, the best thing I could come up with for describing what the zucchini shreds are like, it's like almost um, shredded coconut type texture. Um, so yeah, it's, it's perfect. I just love it. And the flavor is amazing. It's very spicy fall kind of flavoring. Um, so I, I'm just imagining it on a toasted piece of sourdough bread with butter. Mm, so good. So it only took us three days to get the three projects done, but kind of along the way, as I was doing it, I realized that trying to force myself to do 
too much all at once is just silly because I stress myself out, I get exhausted, I get overwhelmed. So allowing myself to do a project like that, that yes, I could have pushed through and done it all in one night, may well, maybe two, but I didn't need to. And it will just make this whole season of preserving everything that's coming out of the garden a little bit easier if I just don't force myself to try and take on too much all at one time. So kind of spreading it out over these three evenings after work, it was perfect and I got them all done. So um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a new way to preserve zucchini with me. That was very fun. And if you have a lot of zucchini like I do right now and want some other ideas for preserving it, here is a, another video on doing just that. So I will see you next time. Bye.